Croatia finished their sixth FIFA World Cup trip in the third place for the second time. There is something special with this team and it won't disappear in spite of all the changes of their squad in the future. Morocco's epic journey ended in a new milestone for African football. Can they do it again in another four years? Welcome back to CGTN Sports Talk. I am Li Xiang and I'm glad to be joined by my colleague Josh here. Great to be back. Hey, so do you think the uh, third place game went as we both expected? You know, open, fast and scoring? Yeah, like, you know, consider that their first game was a very tight nil-nil. Mm -hmm. And this was 1-1 before it even been 10 minutes. I was surprised it only ended up 2-1. Yeah. Based on how open and free the play was. But after Miss Lavosic got that second goal right before halftime, and you saw just how tired the um, the Moroccan team was. I believe they made changes basically as soon as the second half began. I felt like the game was just heading in one direction. Mm. To me, this is interesting because in the first 20 minutes, it seems like the, both sides were like, yeah, it's just the third game. We don't really care that much about it. That's why it's... Not just fast; it's also very loose. I mean, you you look mm. at the two goals in the in the first two goals; they happen so close to each other. It's like they didn't even bother to defend. But after the first half an hour, Croatia first began to grow serious. Okay, we still want to win, and in order to show respect for the fans who are watching, we need to do this a little bit harder. And then they scored the second goal. Then they began to hold back. But unlike the previous ones, they didn't hold back completely. Every time they see an opportunity, they siege it. They try to counter quick counter strike. For Morocco, I would just say it revealed a lot of problems of them. Yeah, definitely. It's a thing which I did kind of wonder when I was watching it, which is when the game is over, regardless of who won, I wondered what the response would be to getting the third place medal. And I think it ultimately made a lot of sense retroactively to see Croatia celebrating it very, very seriously, to see uh, Luka Modric going over and hugging his father, the team celebrating with their fans, their wives, their children, because it did start off in a way that was kind of so open and so free that you did wonder, like, does either side even really care about this? Mm -hmm. Whereas as Croatia grew into it, and I think as Croatia kind of... I, I feel like almost in the case of as Croatia were being pushed by Morocco, especially in that second half when things got a little bit a little bit grim, yeah. a little bit chippy, yeah. uh, I feel like Croatia then were like, okay, we're going to prove to ourselves, prove to our opponents we're taking this seriously and we are the better team. And that proved for a very good game overall. Yes, there were no goals in the second half, but there was still a lot of excellent play from both sides. And ultimately, I do think the better team won. Mm. Uh, Modric said this will not be the end of his national team career, but he also said at least he will play until the Nations League, which I don't think it matters too much. I still want to see him in the Euros uh, two years later. But Croatia, do you think they have someone to carry from him? Because Croatia used at least four new players who have never made their appearance in the World Cup in this one in the starting lineup. That's more like a test. Uh, again, the result of this game doesn't matter too much, but what do you think of this Croatia did, especially in those new blood? Well, that's the thing. Like, it's the, like again, we were saying this whole tournament is based around it being the last, the last hurrah for several of these legends. And I think with Luka Modric, is watching him yesterday, everything he does is dangerous. He is like the moment you give him a second of time and a yard of space, he is firing on target, he's setting up a striker, he's playing in Orsic, Kramaric, whatever it is. He is a generational talent, and I don't think, unless there's a guy who's being hyped, who plays for Dinamo Zagreb or you know so, some other team like that, unless there's someone else coming through, I don't think Modric will be able to be replaced. Mm -hmm. But I look at the players around him, and it isn't the case of a superstar dragging a bunch of mediocre guys. There's a lot of talent in this squad. You know, a player who I've underrated throughout this entire tournament has been Gvardiol. Mm. Like, he got that first goal. Um, but as a centre-back, he's been absolutely incredible. I mean, 
I've kind of got it wrong all the way through where I'm seeing him uh, packaged as a back pair with Dejan Lovren, who he's old. He goes back to you know, the Brendan Rodgers era of Liverpool. He isn't very good. A lot of the mistakes came from him. What I was kind of missing and what I saw yesterday is Josko Guardiol. Basically, he's in. he plays in the back four, but he plays almost as like the pivot of a back three. Mm-hmm. And he covers acres of space and he closes players down incredibly fast. So I'm looking at this team and there's plenty of good talent in it. It's just a case of when you remove one of the best of this generation, one of the best perhaps of all time in terms of pure midfield talent, will they still be able to reach such high levels? I'm not so sure in the immediacy, but the fact that Modric wants to play on till the Nations League, which I believe is next year, Mm -hmm. is the finals, um, makes me think that he's going to play until he simply can't anymore. And there's enough around him that I could very well imagine that as players come into the squad, as players leave the squad, we're going to see, if not a conveyor belt of talent, well, at least a continuation of Croatia being a premier footballing nation. Mm. You mentioned con- continuation. That's uh, That actually inspired me, because when Modric made his World Cup debut, it was in 2006. That was 16 years ago. He was mm. still he, him, He's still here. But players who were along with him changed co- uh, constantly. Maybe this is a, not also another piece of proof to say that Croatia do have a very deep and sustainable pool of talents for football. Well, you know, I, I feel like that's one of those things where, you know, I had never seen uh, Livakovic before, the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Like I say, Gvardiol. These players who I'd never seen before, or if I had seen them, Never really rated them too highly. Mario Pasalic, for example. Um, and Mislav Orsic, I don't think I've ever seen him before. And yet, they are putting on these fantastic performances. I would not be shocked if, after this tournament, a lot of these players who maybe, I, like I say, never heard of, maybe I'd seen play in a lower league side, I wouldn't be shocked if they get picked off by some of the giants. Like like Livakovic to me gave the performance of the tournament in the sense of if you remember Kaylor Navas with Costa Rica mm. in I believe 2014, never heard of him before, suddenly gets the call up and he's playing for Real Madrid. I would not be shocked if Livakovic ends up the same way. That's true. Uh, whichever powerhouses are looking for a new goalkeeper should really pay attention to Croatia. For Morocco, you know, there were always people who were saying that oh, Morocco played so conservatively. Maybe there would be a difference if they began to take the initiative to attack. Maybe it would be different if they attack more. I think the result of the third place and the process proved that they made the right call of playing in a conservative way in the previous com- competitions. Because you could see they were aggressive and they were getting very upset when the referees refused to check the VAR or to give them the, the penalty in the second half. But whenever they moved the ball up near the box, they always made a mistake. They always turned the ball over to Croatia, either with the last pass or when they were moving the ball for exactly the same reason, for moving the ball in front of their box. Their skills, maybe saying them as sloppy is too strong, but I want to say they have a lot of details to work on on the offensive end. Yeah, definitely. The second half in particular, I don't know if the narrative went to their head or they finally realized they were going to go home without some kind of trophy or whatever it was, but that second half, like they were disgraceful on that pitch like i don't like the way players treat referees anyway Mm -hmm. but i always assumed there was like an unspoken rule or maybe a rule written down that i've just never been aware of where even if your entire team crowd around the referee you don't touch him you don't put your hands on the referee whereas in this game the moroccans and it was almost the worst from the big players, Hakim Zia, Ashraf, Ashraf Shikim, Hakimi. They were constantly grabbing this guy, pushing this guy, prodding this guy. I really didn't like seeing it. And for them to end with two yellow cards, and only one of them for dissent, Azadin uh, Unahi, I believe it was, mm-hmm. for them to be in that position at the end of the game, 
I really didn't like seeing that. I really wish the referee would have pulled out a red, gave a bunch more yellows, whatever it is, because that behavior was was abysmal. And I think that goes along with the collapse almost of that team because you, you've you seen it throughout this tournament from the knockouts onwards. Whatever's going on with their centre-backs, they simply cannot keep them healthy. Mm. Um, Saiz, who was taken off with an injury on the stretch in the quarterfinals, could only play 25, 30 minutes in the in the semi-final before he fell down and asked for to be taken off. He was on the bench. He was ready to start. And then you see that Ashraf Dari, after an hour, taken off with an injury, about two or three minutes later. In fact, nothing had happened. For, if, if I remember correctly, Ashraf Dari gets replaced. Then Croatia do like a double replacement for their wingers. And then before the game can even begin, El Yamik just falls over and gets taken off again. Uh, you have Amrabat, who is a very exciting midfielder, having to move back into a defensive position. That team was just falling apart. And maybe it was that that got to them, I don't know. But to see the way Ziek was playing, Bufal was playing, and Nezri had that a chance very close to the end where his vertical leap proved to be his best talent again, but his accuracy was just completely off. Mm -hmm. This is a team that does have talented players, but when they don't play that style where they just hunker down, low block, and then try and burst off on the counter, they get exposed very quickly, especially by a team like this Croatia side who are so good at controlling tempo, so good at controlling possession, that I wouldn't go as far as saying it made them look amateur, mm -hmm. but you could see that the... That first goal by Ashraf Dari caught Croatia by surprise. Then after that, Croatia basically locked themselves down. Perisic, Gvardiol, particularly on the left flank, guarding from Ziyech and, and Nezri. And after that, they basically offered nothing for basically 80, 85 minutes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I want to say I was actually impressed by the hunger and passion of Morocco for this game and for the win. But like you said, there are rules you're not supposed to breach. Like, however, you don't like you don't uh, you don't agree with referees' decisions. You don't touch him. That's the rule. Mm. And the referee was already very, ho really holding himself back from pulling out the red. Also, um, football is pure sport. I agree. But in a tournament like the World Cup. Luck has a lot to do with it. Health has a lot to do with it. Actually, how you keep your players in a good shape has a lot to do with the performance of your team. And Morocco now got the talents. They got unity. They, they even got the luck. And now mm. there are other details for them to work on, like how you not overload your most important players. Seriously, I really don't... Maybe it's an exaggeration, but I watch almost the same players of Morocco fall on, like, lie, either lie there or kneel down there in at least two or three games, the same ones. That says something yeah. about keeping them healthy. And that will matter when your opponents will study you, will pay attention to you in the World Cup. So it's going to be more than your strength, more than your will to keep you competitive. Yeah, that's it. You know, you, you're right in the sense of saying that they have a real hunger, a real drive to compete. And that has basically got them way beyond what everyone expected. But at some point, that story or that narrative goes from being like fairly romantic, fairly respectable, look at these guys playing their hearts out, to look at this threadbare team who can't even compete, can't even keep a whole 11 on the pitch without someone collapsing to the floor. And then, not only that, but when the next game begins, the same guy who we just saw being taken off on a stretcher is starting a game within five minutes, is limping and is is, is behind. You, know, you look at the um, look at the way the game plays. Well, they had five substitutions, and they did take them. But you look at the way the injuries were coming, and it's like they made tactical substitutions very early, mm -hmm. well aware that certain players just did not have the strength to carry on. And when it's like they've already made two changes, three changes, and you're looking at, say, the centre-backs who are limping already, and Waleed Regrawi is not immediately thinking, OK, I need to get fresh legs on and swap those guys out. It's It shows that 
they do have this ability to play through pain, to just give it their all. But when it's this deep into a tournament, at some point the reality strikes and you can't keep it up. And you also have to look across to Croatia, where Luka Modric, Ivan Perisic, not young players, Mm. they've played, what, 90 minutes, 80 minutes for every game they've been in. In fact, no more than that, because the amount of times they've dragged teams to the penalty shootout, be it Brazil, be it Japan. Yeah, so you they must look at this Morocco side and just look and consider them to be, I wouldn't go as far as saying a bunch of amateurs, but definitely a team that is not preparing correctly. And, you know, we were talking about how wondering can they keep this on for another four years for the World Cup in North America. I feel like Morocco's next goal has to be imposing themselves in the African Cup of Nations because mm. this tournament that they had at the start of the year they were terrible, and that's part of, partly why they were such a shock of going this far. So I feel like they need to reevaluate not for a World Cup, especially with the field expanding in this next one, but stay domestic and try and win something there because otherwise I suspect they're going to get exposed again by veteran sides like Croatia. That's true. So for Croatia, I was wondering, they have only made six appearances in the World Cup. Every time they made it out of the group stage, they at least reach the semifinals. Not mm-hmm. as good as the Netherlands did because they played three finals without winning, but I think Croatia showed signs of replacing the Netherlands to becoming the new king without his throne. Though That's kind of ironic because still there's no trophy. Yeah, that, that's it. I feel like this is a team who... Like, like it's it's one of those things with Croatia because they're such a small country, mm-hmm. and because a lot of their players do play ab- abroad, but in ways that are kind of spread out via Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, what have you. You don't necessarily think of them as being much of a powerhouse, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But what they have proven is that when you get them in a tournament like this, you know, yes, it's only two in a row that they've made it this far, but along the way, they've beaten some fantastic teams, some real like. Let veterans of the tournament and I do think that based on how the team, not the team but how the country looks at football like after the success last time around I remember seeing a documentary about it and it looks to me like not only do they take football and sports seriously but now that they've had this kind of success they feel like they can go on they feel like okay well this era of players couldn't do it but the ones coming through were probably going to go go this far. And I wouldn't be shocked if Croatia do become a team where they fill in perhaps in that Netherlands position where they're always, if not winning it, mm-hmm. silver, bronze, semifinals, knocking out giants. I would not be shocked if that becomes their role or their expectation in the next two or three tournaments. Yeah, that's true. Do you think the two teams will again appear in the World Cup in another four years? I think Croatia definitely. Mm. I think, like I said, I think Croatia are too good to lose their position. Even if the star players are not there in four years' time, the next generation will either have established themselves, begun to establish themselves, or will continue to function as such a solid, compact, real team Mm -hmm. that they're going to continue on as for morocco i i don't know i'm not fully convinced that this is a legit squad i think there's a lot of luck involved here a lot of catching teams at the right time um a lot of you know i would be willing to say that with spain with portugal it was a lot more a case of those sides underperforming than morocco getting the win so to speak but i'd say more it's a case of portugal lost Spain lost, yeah. they didn't adapt correctly, rather than Morocco won and were great all the way through. There's talent here, don't get me wrong, but the talent is very focused on the wings, and if you cannot create a back line that can stay healthy for, what, six games, seven mm-hmm. games, it, it, I can't see much in their future. That's true, I agree. And I think so much for today. Thank you for listening. Hopefully we'll be hearing from you guys very soon tomorrow. See ya. Speak to you then. Bye-bye.